Most people take their cat to the vet when it's feeling ill. Well, what if your kitty, like Docha, weighed just under 500 pounds? I told everyone to eat their Wheaties. Yeah. <laughs> Doch, come here. It's all right. We crated him up at John Ball this morning, loaded him in a van, brought him to Potter Park where we put him in their holding area so we could anesthetize him. The lion has been experiencing seizures that are a major cause of concern among his caregivers. A year ago it happened, about a month ago we saw one, and then again one last week. And the females just beat the daylights out of them. And we're afraid if we can't pin something down, they're gonna kill them. That horrible tree. And we're going to see if we can figure anything out today, what may be causing it. Game on. We have a pretty extensive collection of Potter Park Zoo of some big cats, and we've had to anesthetize them before. Um, this is definitely a much uh, bigger deal because you have to look at the transportation, and there's so many different moving pieces that you have to incorporate with it. His trip today has two stops. First up is Potter Park Zoo, where once under anesthesia, it becomes a race against the clock. We're going to Dardum, like, eminently. You're going to get a catheter in while she's getting a catheter. Heather can work on blood at that same time. Um, and then Justin is intubating. And I'll, you know, check heart rate, all that stuff. And then George has got anesthesia and all that. After being weighed, Docha is loaded for transport to Michigan State University. As time is a critical factor, really not wanting to wake a sleeping giant, Docha's caravan is led by police escort to the College of Veterinary Medicine, where he will get an MRI. Horrible 30, horrible 3. Can you back these people up? Yes. Yeah, bring the cart. No, no, no. Pretty good. Okay, got to push from the front. One of the benefits of having this large bore magnet is that we can actually accommodate larger animals. It was actually made for claustrophobic or larger patients. And, uh, and so that's why it's worked really well for horses as well as larger exotic species like this lion. So it, uh, it's, it's not something that could be accommodated everywhere. When you're looking for something like a soft tissue, like tumor, or, you know, they don't know what they're going to find in this lion, but when you're looking for something like that, this is really the only way you can really see it a lot of the times. So other otherwise, you just really have to guess. ECG's working. Okay, we're ready. As Docha's MRI is underway, Faculty and students clamber in to get a peek at the unusual guest. I was really surprised when they somebody came down to where we were at and said, hey, there's a lion coming in today for MRI. We were all like, oh, so we had to come down and see it. These are things that students read about, they might hear about on occasion, but it really does spark the interest in veterinary medicine in general. I've never gotten a chance to work with um, any like wild animals or, you know, zoo animals, but so this is my first experience and it's been pretty cool. To learn as much as possible about his condition, veterinarians implement several other tests while he's still sedated. We'll do an ultrasound examination, we'll do an eye exam, they'll do a dental exam. They'll make sure everything that they can do will be complete so that when we wake him up, we don't have to do it again. In the past, results may have taken weeks to decipher, but now through the MRI, Doche's condition is diagnosed in a matter of hours. We know that there's probably some anomaly in his brain, but the good news is that it doesn't seem like it's anything that needs surgery, nothing that needs to be very invasive, or not anything that seems life-threatening at this time. We did not see any evidence of a tumor or anything very obvious like that. And so this way we know that it's not something that's progressive, he's not suffering, and it's probably something that we'll be able to control medically. Oh, I mean, okay. We're done with the oxygen, Martha. Okay, okay. he's he breathing good. Yeah. <laughs> we are still awaiting some results for his blood results. Uh, we did not see anything abnormal on the ultrasound, uh, but we are still waiting for the blood work to see if he has an infection or a viral infection or something else that could cause it. But at this time, with what we are seeing, we are going to start him on some treatments. We would never have been able to figure that out if we were to anesthetize him at John Ball Zoo and x-ray or ultrasound him there. We would never have been able to find out what's going on in his brain. The College of Veterinary Medicine at MSU, Potter Park and John Ball Zoos, as well as other animal facilities across the state, all benefit from each other, but their ultimate goal is to enhance the quality of life for the animals in their care.
It's a great opportunity that we can offer to our clients and to zoos and to things like that. It really is a nice, it's a nice, very high level of medicine that they practice here. I'm very happy that um, as a CVM grad that I can still work very closely with my alma mater and be able to provide the best possible care for our animals because be with our proximity and with MSU CVM, we're able to accomplish things that other zoos are not able to accomplish. So we're able to diagnose things and potentially treat them faster than what other people may be able to do. If we don't have the resources at one place, we, we check with one another. Hey, can you help us out with this? Can they help us out with that? Uh, we do whatever we can to help each other out to provide the best quality animal care for the animals that we have at our institutions. And, and that's what it's all about, the best animal care.